851, turn right, heading 180. Hey everyone, welcome to DJ's Aviation. It's currently an exciting period for Singapore Airlines as they await the delivery of their very first A350 ULR, and the first one in the world for that matter. With the big day coming closer, I thought why not take the time to discuss the aircraft and its purpose. The A350 ULR is another variant of the popular A350 series, and like many aircraft, does have a purpose. However, unlike your standard A350-900, which can be placed on many different routes, this aircraft has just one purpose, and that is ultra-long haul travel, hence the ULR being slotted into the aircraft's name. The A350 ULR is an aircraft based off the A350-900 with enhanced features and adjusted cabins. In turn, this aircraft has a listed flying time of over 20 hours, and in distance that is around 9,700 nautical miles, or just on 18,000 kilometres. These particular ranges can actually only be achieved through an all-premium economy configuration, so that's ruling out any economy. Essentially, this means airlines that wish to take the ultra-long-haul aircraft on board need to anticipate in advance whether or not they will successfully sell out the aircraft on these 20-hour-plus flights, because classes higher than economy are more expensive and in turn can be out of reach for a number of people that would usually be flying on these routes if economy was on offer. If we take a look at Singapore Airlines, the sole customer so far for this aircraft, they only have 161 seats fitted on board the aircraft. This is in comparison to the usual around 253 which can be seated on their regular A350-900. In other airlines cases, it can be more than that. The A350-900 is split into three classes, whereas this aircraft isn't. In fact, the A350 ULR with Singapore will have only two classes, and that consists of 94 premium economy seats and 67 business class seats. This count for the respective classes isn't something you'd usually see on any other aircraft, as they would be opting for economy seats. So with only the one customer so far, Singapore Airlines is going to be a great example for this video, and even more so with its routes and targeted routes. With the extended length, Singapore Airlines will reopen the world's longest flight from Singapore to New York, on the east side of the United States. They'll also have the ability to further expand into North America with the aircraft's capabilities. They're currently eyeing further expansion on the west side as well. Even better is that depending on the time of year, there'll be tailwinds from the Singapore to New York route. In turn, it's cutting the flight time by some three hours, but this will be dependent on the time of year and the winds. This is a huge positive for travelers, but maybe not so much if you want to experience the business class and or premium economy class for as long as possible. The thing that makes the A350 ULR different is the added fuel capacity. The extra fuel can only be used if a low density premium focused cabin is selected. That means no economy class, and this is why we see Singapore Airlines have essentially what one could say is a big private jet in the sky, with luxury as far as the eye can see. The number of extra fuel as given by Airbus is as follows, 24,000 litres. If any carrier wanted to depart with 300 passengers on board, it would be too heavy to take off with that additional fuel. Now in saying all of this, if an airline did want to have some economy class seats on board, they could do that, but they would need to plan accordingly so they didn't go over the maximum takeoff weight. Where else will the demand come from? This is a very interesting one, because there are many different routes around the globe that could do with an aircraft like the A350 ULR, but some airlines may steer away from it because they have to have an all-premium configuration. Singapore Airlines are one of the few airlines which are actually able to pull off this type of service, and as mentioned, would have analysed if there was a demand for it before launching it. About the only other airline is Qantas, but if we take a look closer, the premium layout doesn't really fit with what Alan Joyce wants for Project Sunrise. So could the sole operator be just Singapore Airlines? I'd say at this stage, it's leaning towards a yes, unless another airline sees the market for 18 to 20 hour flights in an all premium configuration. So you just heard me mention how it's a struggle to find customers because of the niche that the A350 ULR is in. A great example is Philippine Airlines, who were eyeing the A350 ULR. But soon they realised that for their market, for premium travel, within the country wasn't very high, resulting in this being a huge risk on Philippines' part 
to try to sell out their premium economy and hire on every flight to in turn make this route profitable. Instead, they went with the A350-900 to complete their operations to the United States. And we're seeing other airlines also follow this. By picking this A350-900, airlines can have a mixture of business, premium economy, and just general economy, which is of course what a lot of people do fly in. Despite all this, the aircraft is one that is quite exciting, and one, if I could, I'd love to try out. If you've been watching the channel and me for a while, you may know I'm not a huge fan on ultra-long-haul travel. However, my views are slowly starting to change, and I think experiencing this 17-plus hour flight would actually be pretty cool. I'd like to thank you very much for watching this video of mine. If you have any thoughts on the A350 ULR and its operations, don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. I do look forward to you all joining me in the next one. And we'll fly